It's interesting because artificial intelligence has been out of vogue for quite a while. Um, it's had many attempts to, to come in and to be part of the business uh, enterprise, but the barrier has been on, on how to make it commercially viable. There's great um, hype and aspirations about what artificial intelligence can do, um, but in the past it's not been able to put it into a, an enterprise infrastructure and make it commercially available, but we are starting to see that more coming through. Um, starting to see it come through for a number of reasons. One, just the, just the um, um, improvements in core technology that allows people to allow people to run very um, um, computation-based applications efficiently. Secondly, the cloud is enabling people to put the applications in the cloud and make them uh, accessible then to people to embed within their technologies and for consumers to start to use them. Uh, and then thirdly, people are actually understanding what can and can't be done and have some more realistic uh, appetite. Uh, we, for example, have started to embed for the last two years artificial intelligence into our business applications. Um, and those have been very centered on how do you improve the um, working experience and the life of employees. And you do it by trying to create assistants, uh, we call them click butlers, that are able to um, um, second guess, preempt. Um, the work that somebody's doing based on the pattern of work, what other information they may need or spot problems that may occur, for example, because they've overused a number of parts on a particular uh, fault and having overused a uh, number of uh, parts, they may be short of the necessary equipment to fulfill work at the end of the day. So allowing an application to spot that deviation and be able to prompt and, and in some cases um, instigate a, um, a recovery process so the parts arrive in time for, the, for a different job. But if you look out into, into the, um, the general enterprise, uh, for example, there's a company in America which, um, which develops AI technology and they've actually um, appointed the, com the application itself to become a board member and to um, have votes on the board uh, relative to um, some decisions which are, which are being made. Um, it could be argued that's a little bit of a PR exercise, which is great, because they're going to be using the technology to understand some of the complex uh, decision, the data around complex decisions around making acquisitions and making recommendations uh, from that. Uh, I think the work that uh, IBM are doing around Watson in terms of, of making Watson available um, to the development community, not just to IBM, but to the development community in a way where um, independent people can start to create new applications leveraging that core, core asset um, is going to drive innovation and change within the market. Um, the AI applications are really a way of being able to leverage masses of data. Um, with, with cloud, with um, the, the um, pervasiveness of, of, of business applications and our ability to capture data elements and then store them. The question is how do you turn these buckets of, you know, or vast warehouses of data into something that you can make insightful decisions on? And so AI is able to leverage that in order to, to spot patterns and then make recommendations um, and then help drive um, improved um, decisions that people are able to make through presenting them with, with manageable options.